on, and this is not what is needed now. The memory of Wyatt and Jen needs to be the focus, not the evil murderer that took them away. On Sunday the 16th, the Washington Post had spoken to several of Levi's friends and classmates who gave shocked interviews, describing Levi as a nice kid who was friendly and didn't seem to be having any issues. But by February 19th, another article was published with details from their interview with Josh Norwood, along with further details from Levi's friends. In all, four friends were interviewed, including the two I quoted from earlier. The third friend had known Levi for years, but said he had never met his family because Levi had told him that his parents didn't welcome non-whites. Another friend said that it shocked him how Levi supposedly spoke so freely about his father being racist. Levi told him he couldn't bring his black friends home and that he hated it. His pals noticed he'd been so much happier since beginning to date his girlfriend last year, but she is black and they were concerned about what Levi's parents would say. When interviewed, a close family member said that both Jen and Josh were against Levi being in a relationship with a black girl, but that his dad was, quote, adamant. The family member told the Post, quote, he didn't want Leviathan having anything to do with her. But Josh countered this too, saying, quote, I don't care about that. The only thing I told him was, Levi, this girl has a few issues, she's working through some stuff, and you guys don't need to bring each other down. You don't need people who need help and support to feed off of each other and cause you to get worse. The couple shared their love on Instagram with his girlfriend posting at the New Year, quote, I hate it when bad slash sad things happen to my bubby. I would just love to take every ache and pain his heart and mind has to endure, holding him tight as I say everything is going to eventually be better than now. Josh Norwood's Facebook page itself drew intense scrutiny immediately and fed the flames of the racist argument. The Washington Post reported in that February 19th article that his cover photo quoted David Lane's 14 words, the well-known white supremacist motto reading, We must secure the existence of our race and a future for white children. But Josh responded saying, quote, I don't even remember why I put it up. Maybe I was having a bad day. Josh's aunt and Levi and Wyatt's great-aunt spoke to Fox 5 DC three days after the tragedy, saying, You know, it's the unthinkable and unimaginable, terrible tragedy. It's going to take a long time. It's so much shock, and um, you know, my heart breaks for Josh and for my sister Jenny. Um, she adored, idolized her grandsons so much, and and love Jen so much. Um, it doesn't make sense. It's scary. It's traumatizing. It's life-altering. It's just going to be a long, long time. He was just a generous, kind, um, energetic, sweet, easygoing, young teenager. It's hard to talk about it. I very much want to hear what Levi has to say about the events that occurred on February 14th of 2020. I want to hear what he has to say occurred at that home. I will say that it was not an easy home life for him and my heart is just broke, but I, I want to hear what Levi has to say. If something like this was planned, I, I just feel like there would have been some red flags to something so heinous. I really badly want to hear Levi's story. For now, the country and world waits to see if we will find out any more about this case. It remains in juvenile court, but if Levi's case moves to adult court, I'll be sure to let you know. Hug your family members and make sure they know that you love them. I'm sure Wyatt's grandma really thought there would be a next time for her to have lunch with him at school. As always, thanks for listening. Stay tuned for a promo from Murderific True Crime Podcast, hosted by Bernadette out of the great state of Maine. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until next time, don't be scared.
Maine, the northernmost state in America, usually thought of as a quaint, safe vacation destination. Our motto is, the way life should be. But did you know serial killer John Joseph Jobert was raised in Maine and was convicted of three stabbing murders of young boys? Or the unsolved abduction of baby girl Ayla Reynolds, supposedly stolen from her bed near Christmas 2011? Her body has never been found. These are just two of the main stories Murderific has covered. We cover crimes from all areas and main cases as well. Murderific True Crime Podcast, hosted by me, Bernadette, can be found on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or go to murderific.com. We will be executing podcasts one crime at a time.